Hi everyone, my name is David Hong. I'm a doctor that works with Axis, and I'm out in California at Stanford. Today I'm going to read you a story. It's called Gregory and His Extra X by Arlie Colvin, illustrated by Suzanne Hayes. Let's get started. Gregory and His Extra X. Gregory! He hears his mom yell up the stairs. It's time to wake up for school. Sleepy, Gregory says to his mother, Okay, okay, I'm coming. Gregory sits up in bed, stretches and yawns. He has a big day ahead of him. As he stands up, he hears another voice in the hallway. This time it's his sister. Come on, Greg, you're going to make me late again. Gregory leaves his room and heads downstairs. Leave me alone, Megan, I'm awake, he grumbles. Gregory needs to get ready fast. He gobbles down his breakfast cereal and ignores his sister's mean looks from across the table. As he runs back upstairs, his mom yells, don't forget to brush your teeth. Gregory hates brushing his teeth. Back in his room, it's hard to decide what shirt to wear. The blue one? No, maybe the black one. He sees his model airplanes and he wants to play with them. Greg, come on, his sister yells. I'm coming, Meg, he yells back. He sits on his red t-shirt and his backpack, grabs his backpack and runs downstairs. On the way to school, Gregory sits in the back seat while his mom and sister talk about something silly. Gregory stares out the window. He is still upset about how Megan yelled at him this morning. She doesn't get it, he thinks. Megan doesn't understand that I have to do things my own way. You see, Gregory's a little different. He has an extra X. He has a condition called Klinefelter syndrome, or XXY. It all starts with the genes. These genes are not the genes you wear. These are the ones that run in families. Genes are in every cell of the body. They are the instructions that tell the body how to grow, what to look like, and how to think and act. Genes are important and everyone has them, lots of them. Genes make people unique and different from one another. Without genes, people would be f just faceless, brainless blobs of goo. In the body, genes come in bundles called chromosomes. A chromosome holds a bundle of genes, just like a book holds a bundle of pages. There are too many genes to have just one chromosome, so people usually have 46 chromosomes to hold all of their genes. Chromosomes and genes are there from the beginning, when a baby is made. Half of the chromosomes come from your mom, and the other half come from your dad. That's why kids look and act a little bit like both of their parents. Usually, people have 46 chromosomes. Two chromosomes, the X and the Y, are different from the rest. It's these X and Y chromosomes that make boys and girls different. Girls have only X chromosomes, but boys have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. It's that Y chromosome that makes boys look like boys. Gregory is a boy who is a little different. He was born with an extra X chromosome his extra X. So instead of having just one X and one Y like most boys, Gregory has an X, a Y, and an extra X. When a boy has two X's and one Y, like Gregory, it's called Klinefelter syndrome or XXY. Having an extra X chromosome means he has extra genes in his body. Klinefelter syndrome isn't a sickness like a cold that you can catch from other people. Gregory was just born with an extra chromosome. He isn't the only boy with XXY either. There are other boys with extra Xs. Some of them have the same challenges as Gregory, but some don't. He's not ashamed of his extra X. That's just the way he is. Gregory was made with blonde hair, green eyes, smelly feet, and an extra X. No one can tell he has an extra X chromosome just by looking at him. He looks just like other boys, but inside his brain, sometimes his extra X chromosome makes him feel different. Sometimes having an extra X can make things harder for him, like reading or schoolwork. 
That's what Megan doesn't understand. She doesn't get that Gregory is different. He has an extra X, and that means he has to do things a different way sometimes. Gregory's mom drives up to his school. He hops out of the car and sees other boys in his class. See you later, mom. He catches up with the two boys, Sam and Johnny. They walk to class and talk about their weekends. Sam went to the zoo and saw a big giraffe. The boys talk and laugh together. Gregory wants to tell Sam about the time he went to the zoo, but before he can put the words together, the boys are talking about something else. Oh well, Gregory listens and laughs along with his friends. The boys go to their classroom and find their seats. Gregory's teacher is named Ms. Adams. Gregory sometimes needs extra help because it's harder for him to learn and remember things. She gives the class 10 minutes to write a paragraph about their weekends. Gregory gets frustrated. He can't decide what to write about or how to start. Before he knows it, the time is up and his page is blank. Gregory is smart and can learn just like other kids, but sometimes he has to work a little harder because of his extra X. After lunch, Gregory leaves his class to see his speech therapist. His speech therapist helps him learn to speak more easily. Sometimes he can't think of the word he wants to say, or people talk too fast, and he can't keep up. Other times, it's like his words get caught in his brain, like when he wanted to talk about the zoo. In speech therapy, Gregory practice saying the, practices saying these words. The more he practices, the better he gets. Gregory meets with an occupational therapist at school too. Occupational therapy helps Greg practice using his hands to do things that are hard for him, like handwriting and buttoning. He likes to work on his drawings. Gregory imagines all sorts of things to draw. He is the best artist in his whole class, and the more he practices, the better he gets. The school bell rings, recess! He likes taking a break from class and being outside. He and his friends go to the usual spot where they play on the playground. Gregory looks up and sees boys playing tag, and they're running towards him. Nervous and breathing hard, Gregory is glad when the boys swerve just before running into him. Hey, watch it, Johnny yells. It takes a while for Gregory to calm down. He feels overwhelmed by the noise of everyone running around. He takes a moment to close his eyes and catch his breath. That's better. Ring. Ah, oh, man, back to class, guys, his friend Sam says. The second, day, the second part of the day is harder for Gregory. His extra X sometimes makes it difficult for him to concentrate. He takes medication to help him pay attention, but it's tough at the end of the day. Gregory tries to listen to his teacher. It is easier to pay attention when they are taught interesting things or get to use the computer. Today, the teacher is talking about something boring. He looks around and thinks about something else. The bell finally rings and Gregory snaps back to reality. See you tomorrow class, Miss Adams says, as the students get their stuff to go home. After school, Gregory is tired, but happy school is over. This is his favorite part of the day. It's time for his golf lesson. To play golf, he stands and swings the golf club with his arms. When he does it right, the ball flies really far. He's getting better at golf practice, and his arms are getting stronger too. A lot of kids in Gregory's class go to soccer or basketball practice after school. Gregory played on a soccer team once, but he didn't like all the running back and forth or bumping into people. He enjoys golf so much more. It's a different way of doing things, but it works for Gregory. Tired from golf practice, Gregory walks to the parking lot. His mom's picking him up to go to his doctor's office. He sees her waving from her car. He smiles and waves back. Hi, mom, Gregory says. She starts the car and says, hi, honey, how was your day? Gregory says, good. She asks him questions about his day, but he has trouble remembering the details. When he looks inside his backpack, he finds the homework he forgot to turn in. Uh-oh. When Gregory and his mom get to the doctor's office, they sit in the waiting room. Gregory stares at the paintings on the wall. These paintings are so ugly, he tells his mom with a laugh. 
Gregory, don't be rude, she says, but she laughs too. Gregory has been in this waiting room many times before. Since Gregory has an extra ex, he goes to the doctor a little more than other kids. He doesn't go to the doctor because he's sick. He goes to the, so the doctor can make sure he is healthy. Finally, the nurse takes them back to the exam room. Gregory sits on the doctor's table. The doctor comes in and has Gregory lie down. She looks at his body, listens to his heart, and looks into his ears. She pushes on his stomach, which makes him laugh. That tickles! The doctor asks, Gregory, do you know why you have to come to the doctor? He takes a second to think. Because I have an extra X? That's right, Greg. Boys with XXY can be tall and sometimes need extra help in school. Boys with XXY usually need medicine from a doctor to help them during puberty. When their bodies change, the doctor explains. When Gregory is a little older, his doctor will check if he needs a medicine called testosterone to help his body go through puberty. Puberty is when a boy becomes a man. His muscles will get bigger and his voice will get deeper. Most boys go through puberty without the help of a doctor, but since Gregory has XXY, his body doesn't make enough testosterone to go through puberty. When Gregory is older, the doctor might give him the, te the testosterone medicine to help his body change during puberty like other boys. It's a different way of doing things, but it works for Gregory. On the way home, Gregory stares out of the car window and thinks about the future. Gregory is not sure what he wants to be when he grows up. There are so many things to choose from. He could be a farmer or a teacher or an inventor or work on computers. He could be an astronaut and live on Mars. Someday, Gregory might want to be a father and have kids. Gregory can be a father when he grows up, but because it is extra X, he might need help from a doctor to have children. Or he could adopt a child. It's a different way of doing things, but it works for Gregory. Back at home, Gregory and his family sit at the table for dinner. Megan blabs about her day. Gregory is too tired to listen. He wants to finish eating so he can play on the computer. Gregory's dad asks him about his day. He takes a second to think. Um, well... Come on, Greg, I don't have all day, his sister says with a mean grin. Gregory has had enough. Unable to control his emotions, he stands up from the table and yells, Ah, I can't stand you, Megan! He runs up to his bedroom and slams the door. Gregory feels mad and frustrated. Why does she have to be so mean to me? Doesn't she understand that things aren't as easy for me as they are for her? Just then, the door opens. It's Megan. I came to say sorry, she says. I didn't mean to make you so upset. I was just teasing. Megan, you tease me too much. Don't you see that I'm different from you and I have to do things my own way? I know, I'm sorry. It's important for you to be able to do things your own way, Megan says. I'll try to be more patient with you. I love you, little brother. Gregory smiles. I love you too, Meg. It has been a long day. Gregory's parents tuck him into bed. They tell him they love him and close his bedroom door. As he drifts off to sleep, he thinks about his extra X. Having XXY is really just a small part of who Gregory is. His extra X makes him unique and different, just like all of his talents and traits make him unique and different. His extra X is just one of many, many things that make Gregory who he is. When he was made, he ended up with an extra X. It's a different way of doing things, but it works for him. The end. I hope you guys enjoyed this book and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks.